I think brain preservation should be done right. I think cryonics has been a case example of how to do brain preservation wrong, absolutely wrong. Three things need to be in place. One, the brain preservation technique must be able to be demonstrated in laboratory animals to preserve those structures of the brain that neuroscience says encodes long-term memories. That's a must. But that's not good enough because if any run-of-the-mill unregulated company started doing it, they could botch every single case. There wouldn't be any structure to make sure that they do it right. So that's why the brain preservation technique, whatever it is, must be done within the regulated medical system. There needs to be some uh, regulation of who does it and quality control checks all along the way on a patient by patient basis so that if your loved one had their brain preserved, you should know from a third party how good that brain preservation went. Biopsies can be taken from preserved brains, very small biopsies, and be put through chemical and electron micrographic analysis to see how well the brain was preserved, as well as a whole host of other macroscopic uh, tests uh, that look at the, uh, at the whole structure of the brain and its vascular system. Now, even that is not good enough. Even that is not good enough because it is likely under a lot of people's uh, uh, analysis of the situation that uh, a preserved brain will never be revived. You have to realize that we're talking about something that is not going to happen in the next 10 years or 50 years. It may happen in the next 100 years and uh, a reasonable estimate may even be much longer than that. And so the stuff that you're dealing with is not just technological storage, you're dealing with societal and, and world issues of stability. What may occur is, is completely out of your hands. You are essentially putting your brain in a time capsule and giving it to future societies. So anybody that is going into this idea of choosing brain preservation needs to understand needs to have informed consent of how speculative this is. So there needs to be a medical ethics framework that is put around this that makes sure that it is ethically applied. I think those three things need to be in place.